I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch so I really know what I'm talking about and I'm here today to talk about how witchcraft can help you manifest money. But before we get into this video I've got a guest star appearance who is going to talk to you about what you should do with Ginny Metherill. So Ginny Metherill, she's like a nine by the way. Keep her winning bigly in 2020 by subscribing over here, ring the bell, and type some comments with your big hands. How cool is that? I think it's rather appropriate that the leader of the free world and one of the best known capitalists is talking in my video about manifesting money. All right, cool, uh -huh. better do as he says. So let's jump straight into this video. Are you feeling the pinch? Is it a little bit hardcore in your world at the moment because the spondulics aren't really making it through into your bank account? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of methods which you can use to get that money and put it into your bank account. Um, well, this is short of selling your children, your animals, or God forbid, your wardrobe. Uh, the first one is one of the oldest methods ever used and known throughout history by every single culture that you can think of, and that is to ask the goddess for it. So the Egyptians personified her as Mehet Weret, and she was one of the most ancient sky celestial deities in their pantheon. The ancient Greeks called her Agape Tyche, and she was personified by holding a cornucopia of which she could pour abundant wealth from it. The Romans later took this over, and she was known as Fortuna, the ancient Celts took her over as the goddess of prosperity and called her Bergusia, and Bergusia was worshipped in Burgundy uh, for many centuries. She had a massive shrine there that the Druids had built for Bergusia, um, which ensures really that her name survives even into nowadays, because I believe she's referenced in some game called Destiny the Game, some video game. I don't play video games because I'm not very good at them and it makes me too excited. So I don't know, but anyway, good old Bogusia and the Celts. She remained popular right through medieval European history and the medieval Europeans next Fortuna, the Roman goddess, and called her Lady Fortuna. And they showed her having charge of the Wheel of Fate, which has four distinct portions to it, you know, the ascent to greatness, the pinnacle of your dreams at the top, then the descent into the nadir at the bottom. She was hugely popular right through medieval times, into Victorian, Edwardian, and now today, where we know her as Lady Luck. You know, a lot of gamblers will often ask for Lady Luck's help as they throw the dice, and why not? She's very good at helping. One of her jobs, after all. Lady Fortuna is referenced today in her tarot cards with the Wheel of Fortune, showing us the fickleness of fate. So if you get it upright, the Wheel of Fortune, it means that you are on the ascent with your fortune and reversed is the opposite. Her feast day was taken as the 24th of June, which the Christians didn't like, so they immediately annexed that and gave it to St John the Baptist as his feast day, which is, it is of course, midsummer. So midsummer is a great time to worship the Lady Fortuna. However, we are not in midsummer at the moment, it's February. So for witches, we look at the Lady Fortuna as being the person to ask and help manifest money. She has a dominion over all money and its energy and the ebb and flow of it, so she can push it into your bank account or she can send it off to the US government, wherever she chooses. She not only has dominion over tangible money assets, but you know the concept of money, for example, cryptocurrency, you know, that's Bitcoin, she can push that around too. So she is the person to go for, to ask, to manifest money into your bank account easiest way to do this is to set up an altar to the Lady Fortuna and then ask her for exactly what you require. Setting up an altar can be as simple as lighting a candle and placing it on your windowsill, maybe with some flowers or some uh, sweet smelling roses, whatever you feel is appropriate for your worship of the Lady Fortuna. Some people would rededicate an altar. So if you've got an existing altar with your sigils and your charms and whatever you have on your altar, you can rededicate it to the Lady Fortuna. It's a great thing to do to light a candle because that's so symbolic and it has a lot of energy in it, showing the prayers, going up to Lady Fortuna, asking her for whatever it is. 
The second thing that you've got to be aware of is that you cannot be general. You must be very specific. If you ask for, can I have some money? She might send you a penny that you pick up off the street. And that, you know, in her mind, is, you know, she's giving you some cash. But if you said, please, can I have £350 into my bank account? She's got something very definite to work with and that she can do. She has dominion over all money, remember. So you just need to tell her how much you want and where you want it to go. It's also really important not to then nag her about it, you know. Have your altar, have your worship, have your send your prayers up to her, but don't keep asking, you know, how annoying is it when somebody continually asks you to do something for them when you're sort of doing it? It's really irritating. Same applies here. Don't nag. The Lady Fortuna is really one of the kindest of the old gods, and I really recommend her as your starting point. However, you must trust in her and put your faith in her. If you don't connect with Lady Fortune, it's not going to work. You know, she can't hear you. She was not receiving your worshipful and your grateful thanks. Uh, you need to be faithful to her and trust in her and not now. However, if the worship of one of the world's oldest deities is not your bag, and, you know, I can understand that some people do not like to worship, and, you know, okay. So I, Ginny Metherell, have created a spell with my coven to give to the whole of YouTube to show you how to magically manifest money. And it uses just one ingredient. And this one ingredient is a red jasper quartz tumble stone, or stone, or rock. Here's mine. Nice, isn't it pretty? Red jasper. It's a quartz stone. It's really common throughout the world. So it's not expensive. You know, I think I was looking up on uh, the Bay of E, as we call it in our house, and they are selling them for about a pound, including postage, for something, you know, about this size. And that's all you need. In fact, you don't want anything much bigger, because I like to then keep it in my wallet after the spell is complete, just for extra help. Anyway, so this spell is very simple and uses this one ingredient. And I have written it down for you and I've put the link to the spell in the description below so you can download it to make sure you're not missing out on anything or any part of the spell. So we're going to use um, this red jasper because it has the same energy level as money does. And this is part of the law of attraction. Like attracts like. So the energy in this stone attracts the energy of money because they are very similar. Witches of old knew this and would use the law of attraction for all sorts of things. But, and one of them being manifesting money into your bank account or into your you know, hovel or whatever you are as an ancient witch. Probably not in a hovel. I always imagine them to be living in castles. You know, why would you live in a hovel if you're an ancient witch? It sounds a bit stupid to me. I'd live in a castle. So on a night when the moon is shining brightly and the skies are clear. Starts well, the spell, doesn't it? Quite witchy. And go out and leave your red jasper, the stone of your choice, in the moonlight. So put it on a stair, pour on the windowsill, and let the moonlight cleanse and charge the stone for about an hour. This is an important part of this ritual because the stone might have picked up some negative energy which would detract from the working of the spell. So the moon and the moon's light is going to recharge that and cleanse it. So once you've cleansed your stone, I want you to take it and hold it in your hand. And then preferably, if you can, but don't worry if you can't, face the moon and talk to the stone. And the spell you're going to say goes along these lines. I ask you, Red Jasper, to bring me X amount of money into my bank account, piggy bank, wallet, wherever you want it. I ask you to bring me this money free from obligation, free from restraint, and free from retribution. And once you've said this, say it three times. And once you finish that, finish the spell by saying, so mote it be. There, now you have fully charged your red jasper. The next part of the spell is much easier. You just need to hold the jasper on your person as close to your tummy as you can get. So if you've got a pocket, I suppose that's quite close. If you've got pockets around here, that's much better. Um, it needs to be held on your person for three days. And once it has been there for three days on your person, close to your tummy, the spell is set. 
The great thing about this spell is that once you've carried the red jasper on your person for three days, uh, the stone is, you know, you can use it for something else. Take it out. I normally keep it in my wallet just because it's got money energy and it attracts money into my wallet. And that's where I keep a red jasper stone. And I would advise you to do the same. Anyway, so that is how you can manifest money through witchcraft uh, using the power of attraction or the lady luck at Lady Fortuna. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.